Hello and welcome to today's webinar. I'm your host, Phil Durita, LaSallian Programs Manager for Christian Brothers Conference. Also joining me behind the scenes is Sarah Leighton, our Director of Education and Formation. And we're thrilled to be with you this afternoon, depending, uh, or evening, depending on where you are in our LaSallian world. We have LaSallians joining us from all across the country, coast to coast. Uh, we also have international participants, including from the General in Rome. The sun never sets on the Global LaSallian Mission. On behalf of Christian Brothers Conference, it is my distinct privilege to host today's presentation, Integral Ecology, a new LaSallian educational project, and introduce Brother Gus Cinco, FSC. Brother Gus's life has revolved around faith, education, and the environment, as evidenced by his pursuit of his degrees in theology, education and ecology, and information system analysis. As a De La Salle Christian brother for over 50 years, Gus spent 21 years educating mostly in Venezuela, followed by nearly 30 years in the Midwest District here in the United States. On a personal note, I had the privilege of working with Brother Gus when we were communications directors for our respective district offices, and I was always struck by his humility, his kindness, his positive spirit uh, in every project we collaborated on. It was always a pleasure working with him, and I'm happy to be working with him again today. <laughs> An eco passionate about nature, Gus believes in the transformative power of nature on young minds. This is why he actively promotes integral ecology education serving as director for the Environmental Sustainability Education Initiative, also known as ESEI, for the LaSallian region of North America. It is a real treat to be working with Brother Gus again, and you're in for a real treat too. A fitting topic ahead of Earth Day coming up in just about a week. Without further delay, I introduce Brother Gus Cinco. Take it away, brother. Thank you, Phil. Good evening, everybody. And uh, let's start the presentation right away. Okay. Good evening, LaSallians, and welcome to today's sessions on uh, Integral Ecology and LaSallian Educational Project. Why Integral Ecology? To cultivate truly responsible citizens capable of tackling complex challenges, students need ecological literacy in an understanding of of how environment, society, and individual well-being are intertwined. This is why the Midwest District launched the Environmental Sustainability Education Initiative with Brother Michael Serenbats in Reliance support. This presentation is divided into two sections. The blue section is more informative, focusing on providing background, the green section is more reflective and action-oriented, encouraging you to consider the implications and take steps forward. So we will start with a, a brief intro, then a prayer. Next, unveiling the call of Laudato Si, a glimpse into its crucial uh, message. The interplay between La Salian documents and Laudato Si exploring the connections between the La Salle core principles, Laudato Si, Global Compact on Education, and La Salian documents. Then, how integral ecology find its voice in ecological linguistics? Why integral, what integral ecology means? And then suggestions about starting an environmental program. Then, a prayer to wrap up our session, and finally, Q in a time. Throughout the presentation, I'll be asking some rhetorical questions, giving you a minute or so to reflect. Feel free to share your comments, your comments on the chat. If you have any questions, please use the Q&A uh, feature. Okay, so let's start with our intro. When was the last time you felt blanketed in awe and inspired by wonder? When was the last time you experienced the feeling of being in the presence of something bad that challenged your understanding of the world?
why all? All is connected to good health and dampening feelings of materialism, or ignites creativity, sharpen critical thinking, and cultivates a humble sense of self. After experiencing all, people become more generous, apt more selflessly, and make more ethical and altruistic decisions. All enhances empathy through social behavior, stronger social connections, in finding meaning and purpose in your life. A 2023 study by Springtime involving nearly 5,000 Lasallian students revealed that 72% of respondents found meaning and fulfillment in spending time outdoors. And an outdoor activity often involved the company of friends, family, and pets. All Mel's personal grandeur, weaving us into the fabric of life, both natural and social. All in wonder are like a dance between being stunned into silent and then drawing into explore. All sets the stage, a blank canvas upon which wonder paints its story. Wonder is the spark of curiosity ignited by all, the urge to understand and reflect, to connect with what has mesmerized us, leaving us ultimately filled with gratitude. All in wonder <laughs> don't have to stop as we age. They are vital in a fulfilling adult life. They remind us of the vastness beyond our routines fostering a deeper connection to the world around us. Let's pause for a minute and think, was there a time in which you stepped away from all and wonder? This photo captures a piece of my childhood connection to nature. I grew up part of my childhood with a national park in my backyard. My family used to live three blocks from the school. I spent countless hours playing football on these fields. Then as a young biology teacher, half of our ecology classes were held in the mountain. Many times after football practice, we went for hikes to eat mangoes, drink from uh, waterfalls, and watching sunsets, often ending with prayers of gratitude. During my college thesis research, I spent a year around some of the Leeward and Windward Islands studying reptiles. My days were filled with collecting samples and watching sunsets and sunrises. I told you about my childhood in John Adult Earth Connection story. Let's pause for a minute and think about yours. Before we pray, I want you to pay attention to the wording of this prayer and the time it was translated.
Let us remember that we are in the holy presence of God. Let us adore Him. O oh, Great Spirit, whose voice I hear in the winds, and whose breath gives life to all the world. Hear me. I need your strength and wisdom. Let me walk in beauty and make my eyes ever hold the red and purple sunset. Make my hands respect the things you have made and my ears sharp to hear your voice. Make me wise so I may understand the things that you have taught my people. Let me learn the lessons you have hidden in every leaf and rock. Help me remain calm and strong in the face of all that comes towards me. Help me find compassion without empathy overwhelming me. I seek strength, not to be greater than my brother, but to fight my greatest enemy, myself. Make me always ready to come to you with clean hands and straight eyes. So when life fades as the fading sunset, my spirit may come to you without shame. Francis Laudato Si is the most comprehensive Vatican document to date on environmentalism, ethics, and Christian faith. One of the striking ethical features of Laudato Si is its focus on the intrinsic value and rights of non-human creatures and ecosystems. Francis calls for a change in our relationship with the Earth from one of domination to one of respect and protection. He calls to examine the relationship between the rich and the poor and the connection between environmental degradation and poverty. And finally, the relationship between humans and God. The encyclical ultimately sees the environmental crisis as a, a spiritual crisis. You probably watched Pope Francis take talks about our moral imperative to act on climate change. He points out, and I quote, the urgent challenge to protect our common home includes a concern to bring the whole family together to seek a sustainable and integral development. The Pope asks us in his message, what kind of world do we want to leave to those who come after us, to children who are now growing up? With that in mind, I would like to share with you some key points from Laudato Si. First one is paragraph 210. It is essential to be engaged in the world, to make a practical difference and benefit society, but also because without engagement, academic work is liable to detach from reality. In that regard, it needs educators capable of developing an ethics of ecology and, help, and helping people through effective pedagogy. What do I mean by ethics of ecology? Ethic of ecology is a complex and evolving field. Examining its semantics Ethics of, of ecology is about respect and responsibility, how our actions have consequences in the moral relationship and connection between humans 
in the natural world. It is about the principles and values that guide our relationship with the natural world. But we can only be ethical to something that we can see, feel, understand, and love. The second paragraph is 2.11. Nurturing virtues like empathy and solidarity towards nature ignites a selfless ecological commitment that transcends self-interest and blossoms into concrete action for a healthier planet. As you know, Laudato Si sets out seven ambitious goals. Here they are. Response to the crowd of the earth, response to the crowd of the poor, ecological economics, adoption of sustainable lifestyles, ecological education, ecological spirituality, and finally, community engagement and participatory action. As educators, we know the immense importance of ecological education. As Pope Francis said, we lack an awareness of our common origin, of our mutual belonging. A great cultural, spiritual, and educational challenge, it stands before us, and it will demand that we set out on the long path of renewal. And the same applies to ecological spirituality. Let's pause for a minute and think which Laudato Si goal resonates the most in your heart. There are several excellent documents that talk about the integral ecology. For the sake of time, I'll mention only the general chapter document. The 46th general chapter document in its uh, fourth pathway, integral ecology conversion says, recognizing that everything is interconnected and received as a gift, we commit to a new way of being in the world through our convictions and lifestyles we strive to cultivate ecological citizenship that fosters a more fraternal world. Although this document is not La Salle and our superior general endures our commitment to the Global Compact on Education, like Laudato Si, the Global Compact outlines also seven goals. And here they are. To make human persons the center to listen to the voices of children and young people, to advance the women, to empower the family, to welcome, to find new ways of understanding economy and politics, and to safeguard our common home. The La Salle Core principles guide our ministries, shaping every interaction and program we offer. But is there any connection between Laudato Si Global Compact on Education in La Salle Core Principles. While weaving La Salle Principles into the school culture requires time in education, in dedication, incorporating the additional goals of Laudato Si, the Global Compact on Education, and the general chapter fourth pathway can be overwhelming. Let's pause and think. How do we bring together La Manusi goals and global competence and the La Salle core principles in a way that works?
realize that the five last island core principles are paving the way for Laudato Si goals. Also, the general chapter for pathway in global competent and education goals, and even the United Nations 17 sustainable development goals. Let me show you how. Let's take, for example, how interconnected are the La Salle Corp principles and Laudato Si goals. Notice how it intertwined is concern for the poor in social justice and Laudato Si response to the crowd of the poor. These interconnectedness extends to the other Laudato Si goals as well. What about the Global Compact on Education? See the connection between respect for all persons and to make human persons the center and so on. What about the 17 SDGs? Literally the same quality education and quality education and the same thing for the rest of them. We are already incorporating these goals in various ways. While Laudato Si, the Global Compact on Education, and the SDGs align with La Salle principles, we just need to be more intentional in our integral ecology programs to amplify their impact. Inspired by Laudato Si and the 46th General Chapter, we invite you to empower students to become change makers who echo La Salle values by, by caring for our planet and its people. Let's pause. How can we bring the awareness for environmental education in our classroom or ministry and advocate for systemic change? Probably, chances are you are taking some actions. Let's talk about ecolinguistics. Language, it is often said, it is a window into the human mind. My mom used to say, de la abundancia del corazón habla la boca. Out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks. It is widely believed that communities closely connected to the natural world tend to be better stewards of biodiversity than those less attached to nature. Ecolinguistics is a fascinating, evolving, and increasingly important field that explores the intricate relationship between language, culture, and the environment. Here are some key aspects of ecolinguistics. First, focus on interrelationships. It studies how language interacts with various ecological factors, including other species, the physical environment, and social and cultural contexts. Second, humans as part of the ecosystems. Ecolinguistics see humans as integral component of larger ecological systems. People who live close to nature have a rich lore of plants, animals, and landscapes embedded in their mother tongues which may hold vital clues to protecting biodiversity. Remember the language used in the Native American prayer? Third, language's impact on the environment. It examines how our language style and language behavior regarding the environment can influence its well-being both positively or negatively. Fourth, linguistic diversity and health. Just like biodiversity contributes to a healthy planet, ecolinguistics emphasizes the importance of linguistic diversity 
for a thriving environment. Three, addressing environmental challenges. The field aims to harness the power of language to address critical ecological issues like biodiversity loss, climate change, and environmental justice. Let's go back to language's impact on the environment. Our language profoundly influences how we perceive and interact with the natural world, shaping our environmental actions. Every time a language disappears, a speaking voice also disappears. A way to make sense of reality disappears. A way to interact with nature disappears. A way to describe and name animals and plants disappears. We must harness this power to promote awareness, inspire action, and deconstruct harmful language habits, such as using terms like natural resources, carbon footprint, conquering nature, and debunk semantic engineering and greenwashing. Let me explain. The term um, carbon footprint was created by the fossil fuel industry to shift responsibility for climate change onto us. By using this term without critique, we risk overlooking the significant contribution of the fossil fuel industry itself to greenhouse gas emissions. Conquering implies violence and domination. Nature is portrayed as an enemy, hindering opportunities to develop a healthy relationship. The term resource implies something to be used or exploited, potentially perpetuating unsustainable practices. It can downplay the inherent value and interconnectedness of ecosystems. Greenwashing is a deceptive marketing practice where companies or organizations present themselves as environmentally friendly. For the record, Coke is the number one plastic polluter. Semantic engineering refers to the practice of a strategically using language to shape public perception on environmental issues. Take, for example, Aripec. Their slogan, decarbonizing faster together. Algebra call on oil and gas companies to be, I quote, central to the solution to fighting climate change, end of quote. Notice that Algebra is also CEO of the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company and also was the president for uh, up 28 recently celebrated in Dubai. During a she changes climate Zoom meeting, when pressed if he will commit to phase out fossil fuels, Oliver said, here are his words. And there is no science uh, out there or no scenario out there that says that the phase out of fossil fuel is what's going to achieve 1.5. So, Let's shift to some uh, positive samples of ecolinguistics. All of, all of you know uh, Sagan, and Sagan wasn't just a renowned astrophysicist, but also an ardent environmentalist. He rose awareness about climate change and the value of our fragile planet, inspiring a lot of generations to protect it. Here is an excerpt on his own words. Our posturings, our imagined self-importance, the delusion that we have some privileged position in the universe are challenged by this point of pale light. To me, it underscores our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another and to preserve and cherish the pale blue dot the only home we've ever known. Another example, Albert Einstein, a theoretical physicist with a loving care for creation. 
here are his remarks. A human being is a part of the whole, called by his universe. He experiences himself as something separated from the rest, a kind of optical delusion of his consciousness. Our task must be to free ourselves from this prison by widening our circle of compassion to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature and its beauty. Laudato si, like Sagan in Einstein, is Tritz's plasmic connection, urgent care for nature and each other. As La Salians, our task is to respond to the cry of the earth by replacing our relationship with nature from one of exploitation and dominance to one of wonder and connection. This shift is vital for our spiritual well-being and the precious harmony of all life on earth. We need to acknowledge the urgency of the environmental crisis and commit to building a new path with God our neighbor in the earth. As Pope Francis said, the only future worth building includes everyone. Let's pause and consider the language or languages you speak. How do they reflect or influence your relationship with the natural environment? What is integral ecology? Integral ecology, as proposed by Pope Francis, emphasizes three deeply connected relationships as the foundation of human life, a relationship with God, with fellow humans, and the natural world. Integral ecology recognizes the interconnectedness of environmental, economic, social, cultural, and ethical issues. This holistic approach seeks to create a comprehensive understanding of the interconnectedness of all living things in their relationship with the planet, promoting social change through inclusive knowledge production and valuing diverse perspectives. And here you have it, integral ecology. Integral ecology calls for a profound transformation, a shift in both heart and mind. The Celts offer a beautiful metaphor for this spiritual experience, calling it the thin place. Envision a moment and space where the boundary between heaven and earth appears to fade, fostering a deeper connection to the sacredness of nature. I invite you to venture into nature, seek out these thin places and begin your journey. Because in the end, we will conserve only what we love. We will love only what we understand and we will understand only what we are taught. Let's pause for a second. How does this understanding transform your relationship with God, your neighbor, and the environment? Who are we human beings? Within this array of life forms, what is our role, our gift? Before starting an integral ecology program, 
we need to examine first our heart and habit. Here are some suggestions. Begin with introspection and self-awareness. Reflect on your values and beliefs. Consider your relationship with the natural world and your impact on it. Examine your habits and lifestyles. Identify areas where you can make changes to live more sustainably. Embrace transformation. Shift your mindset. Move from a perspective of taken from nature to one of caring for it. See yourself as a steward of the earth, responsible for its well-being. Practice gratitude. Appreciate the interconnectedness of life and the inherent value of all living beings. Cultivate a sense of connection with nature. Spend time outdoors. Immerse yourself in the beauty and wonder of nature. Learn about indigenous ecological knowledge. Gain wisdom from cultures that have been traditionally lived in harmony with nature. Take practical steps to live more sustainably. Reduce your consumption. Choose minimalism and avoid unnecessary purchases. Avoid plastic. Divest from fossil fuels. Conserve resources. Be mindful of your water and energy usage. Eat a more plant-based diet. Reduce your consumption of meat and animal products. Support sustainable businesses and policies. Choose products from environmentally responsible companies. Foster connections. Engage with your community. Participate in collective efforts to address environmental challenges. Advocate for change. Support policies that promote environmental protection and social justice. Remember, integral ecology conversion process is a lifelong journey of learning, reflection, and action. To find a meaningful and visible way to start an environmental program, consider creating your own environmental action Venn diagram. What are you good at? Think about your skills and resources. Also, what work needs to be done? Are there any particular environmental and social justice solutions that interest you? What problems resonates with you? And finally, consider what brings you joy and motivates you. What sparks your passion and gets you going. Think of this program as an embodiment of the Japanese concept of Ikigai, which translates to reason of for being or life purpose. The sweet spot lights at the intersection of these uh, three areas. Focusing on this sweet spot can lead to greater environmental progress. Finally, couple more steps. Securing the support of both administration and teachers is crucial for your program for your program success. Form a team of people who are supportive. According to our latest uh, Reland survey conducted in 2022, 9% of the school community supports environmental education programs. Develop a comprehensive plan outlining goals, objectives, curriculum, and budget. Implement service learning projects to empower students to make a positive impact in their communities while developing valuable skills, collaboration, and problem solving. Need some help? Our program offers a suite of services to empower individuals in the schools, like professional um, development, a myriad of lessons uh, plans, uh, media 
resources. Also resources from the UNESCO and Laudato Si action uh, platform and many others. Eco retreat for faculty administrators, but especially for students. The possibility also for students to participate on eco justice field trips and networking with the La Salle educational community. And finally, a survey. An environmental survey gives you great initial insight about developing an environmental program. Just a brief uh, parenthesis about this survey. This is a prospective longitudinal survey. It was designed with the help of Ohio State University, Christian Brothers University, and ESEI. The figure represents the idea that behaviors at the top of the pyramid are many and varied, while values at the bottom are few in number and foundational. Let's pause for a minute and reflect. What seems visible for you? If there is something not covered by this list, I'll be happy to provide any other resource as requested. But before we continue, a big thank you for attending this webinar. Your dedication to continue learning is inspiring, but especially so is your commitment to shaping compassionate and environmentally conscious students by opening their eyes the beauty and fragility of our world will empower them to make a difference. Thank you for inspiring your hearts and minds to care for our community. Let us pray. Let our Creator bless the world and protect the earth. with us as we plan ways for our ministry to be good words of creation. In our faith community, but for those around us, other people continue to commitment to the world of the earth, to create a change in the world, in the of ourselves, praying for us, and in If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. If you need my contact info on the screen, as you can see, is my e-card QR code. Okay, let me stop sharing. Okay. I told her that was incredible. Thank you so very much. Um, so at this time, as brother has said, we, we do open the floor, if you will, to Q and A. Uh, so do pop your questions into the Q and A section of our uh, Zoom platform. Um, one of the things I will say, brothers, I was struck by, um, and it made me really think and reflect, is the language we use. Um, so often we talk about, you know, the things that we're doing, and, and we talk about how we're being, you know, we're conserving our resources, or we're trying to mitigate our carbon footprint and and we think we're doing well and we think we're engaging this process of of trying to protect our planet and and there has to be that next shift and it's i, I appreciate your insights in some of those things because it's all too often we we get caught up in the the stuff and the action um but that there has to be a deeper conversion in all of this and so uh, i thank you for taking the time to set up what is this movement that we need to be thinking about um, and, and what has to happen with us first before we can start to really move forward. So um, 
a wonderful presentation. I'm absolutely floored. Thank you, brother. No, thank you. So, um, I think, brother, you give us a lot of um, fuel, if you will, good bio fuel to think about. Um, and right now, I'm not seeing questions in our chat. I think the QR code that you provided will allow folks to reach out to you individually. Um, and so with that, mm -hmm. I think we'll take that those, those questions of, of prayer and reflection and, and take them with us. Um, we're getting compliments, thank yous across the board for an amazing webinar. Um, from Charlie Lejeune, thank you, Brother Gus. Often environmental courses are located in science departments. The connections with spirituality are often difficult, not impossible to make. Any suggestions? Um, you mentioned first that it's very important that we need to convert our souls first. And that will be the route that I will go first. Before we try to implement, do plans, and uh, uh, brainstorming with uh, possible ideas, I will suggest first the personal conversion, the ego conversion that you need to do first. Because when you do that, your mindset is going to shift. It's going to be different. And the way that you're going to plan is going to be a different. So right now, probably you are feeling like, oh, my God, I'm overwhelmed. I have no idea how am I going to do this. But as Christians and as uh, believer, believers in, uh, in prayer, I think that that is spiritual retreat that we need to do before we start to do or plan to start any program is very, very important. So take yourself a time and go away. And then think in the in nature and ask yourself and ask God, God, what do you want me to do? And in that uh, connection between you, God, in nature, the solutions or the ideas will start to come. Of course, every single ministry has its own particularities, its own identity. So I will say, as before, pray first, before you start to do any planning. Count God in your plans and then do your plan. Excellent. Some more comments coming in. Thank you for this. It's such a wonderful place to start to make a difference. What a beautiful, uh, thank you, Brother Gus. The understanding of the close connection to integral ecology to the sound mission is powerful and inspiring. Another question has come in from Sigrid. Uh, what are teachers needing and wanting in order to create, educate young people holistically in this way? Uh... The question is, what teachers wanting? What are teachers needing and wanting in order to create, educate young people holistically in this way? I, I don't know if I understood exactly the meaning of the questions, but as I said before, if you are planning, for example, when you're teaching math, you explain geometry or whatever, and that doesn't in, involve you to change your mind or your habits or uh, your values. Integral ecology is a totally different uh, uh, topic. It, it, for you to make the students um, believe in what you're preaching, you have to believe in it. You have to be Immerse yourself in those ideas. Remember that uh, the founder many times says to us that we need to preach with our behavior. We have to model first what we want our students to do. So many times, as St. Paul says in, the, in one of his letters, that when needed, use word, preach with words, meaning that 
usually you don't need words. You really need first is the conversion and modeling the attitudes and behavior that you want to students to model, do it yourself first. And of course, if you want to continue this conversation, I will be happy to, uh, you know, set a, a meeting with the person who asked the, the question. I don't see who, who did it, but I will be more than happy to give you a little more insight. Okay, Sigrid. So if you're still on, go make sure you have uh, Brother's QR code there for contact information uh, so that he can really answer the QR code just in case it's here too, again. There you go. You just need to point your phone to this QR code and then you will have all my info. Excellent. Um, some other comments that are coming in as we start to close out. What a beautiful reflection. I loved your crosswalk with the core principles. You really affirm the human and Christian connection to this life, this planet we have been blessed by. Thank you, brother, for your generosity. I do appreciate your invitation and encouragement to be mindful of our language. And while we have our, our plans laid out uh, and uh, out and interconnected, you gently remind us to be intentional, and this is something that we need. Thank you for this presentation. Thank you very much for this webinar. Let's see, giving, thank you for giving us ideas that we can use to engage students and faculties in regards of this advocacy, ecological advocacy. Thank you for the inspiring webinar. This connection to nature is critical. Please continue to share this message with our LaSalle community. Uh, and Sigrid said she will definitely reach out to you. So. <laughs> thank you. Excellent. So brother, thank you so very much as, as we wrap up. Um, it's just been inspiring everything that you've brought to us and, and there's a lot to 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 pray and 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 wrap our our arms and and our hearts around so um in closing as lasallians of part of this global church we're called obviously as, as brother Gus said most recently by pope francis encyclical laudato si and always by our creator to be stewards of this planet his great gift to us Thanks to you, brother, for this prayerful and practical presentation on how we can cultivate the ecosophist within ourselves and, and nurture seeds of compassion and advocacy in the young people entrusted to our care to be the next generation of caretakers for our shared home. Thanks to all of you for joining us today for this presentation. It's been a pleasure to host you. Keep an eye on your email for a recording of this webinar. We'll share with you the Lasallian Resources Center link website when it becomes available. So this concludes our webinar series for the 2023-2024 academic year, but be sure to check our website and our social media channels for our next series starting back up in the 24-25 academic year. If you have any ideas of what webinars you'd like to see, subjects that we want to cover, let us know on our social media channels or email me, pdorita at cbconf.org. Again, thank you for joining us. Thank you for all you do for young people and blessings to you as you continue to serve this awesome LaSallian mission. St. John Baptist de LaSalle. Pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts. Forever. <laughs>